find the force F applied into a 297 kg wooden box necessary for impending motion of the plane. The coefficient of static friction is 0 0.4. So from the formula, from the force of static friction equals to mu S N, to identify all forces and directions, we draw a free body diagram. So from the summation of F Y is equals to 0, we have the force of gravity, the negative gravitational force direction, which is our mass times gravity. And, in, and adding the small part of the normal force with the Pythagorean theorem minus the static friction with Pythagorean theorem also from the normal force and the static friction surface. It is understood that the surface is perpendicular to the normal force where static friction direction is also present. So for the long process of solving, we are able to find the normal force. So, from the long process, we have the normal force is 3,783.78 newtons. So, from the summation of f of x equals to 0, so the negative normal force and the presence of the normal force, we will get, finally, the force, 2,852.39 newtons. Determine the centroid of x bar and y bar of the shaded area which is have the length of 5.9 meters. Y is equivalent to x cubed. So first, in order to find it, I get a small part of the element of the shaded area, a vertical strip. The height of the strip is y. Put an imaginary centroid with the half of this distance is y over 2. And from this distance from the vertical strip is x. And from the thickness of the strip is d sub x. Now that we identify all variables, we will apply what we learn from integral calculus using the formulas derived from the given to find the centroid x bar and y bar. You can direct calculate using advanced scientific calculators or you can either use what we learn in integral calculus. So the x bar is equivalent to 4.72 meters and the y bar is equivalent to 58.68 meters. That's the centroid. Find the IXX or the IX prime about the centroidal axis theorem using the parallel axis theorem. So using the given equation, IX prime is equals to one Note over that 12. That it is understood prime. that it is divided into three rectangles. This is an equation. I beam when so, the dimensions are in inches. So the IXX now or the IX prime is equivalent to one over twelve base times h cube plus area d squared or a d squared so so now we're gonna apply the formula 1 over 12 times the base which is 18 and times 2 inches which is 2 inches cubed plus 36 which is length times width and 8 squared is the distance of the centroid between the two we will multiply it by 2 because it is because the two rectangles are the same plus 1 over 2 of 2 times 14 cubed plus 28 which is the base times height and 0 the area is 0 so cancel out so in total we have a 4632 plus 457.33 so the ix prime is equals to 5089.33 inches so find the moment of inertia of the composite shape t shape so we divide it into two which is two rectangles Area is equal to length times width. So the first rectangle, the length times width is, is 3,600 millimeter. And the second rectangle, the length times width is 2,000 millimeter. And the Y bar is 70 millimeter. And for the second, rectangle is 25 millimeter so if we multiply the y bar times the area we have 
252,000 mm3. For the second, we got 50,000 mm cube. So the, so the summation of areas of 1 and 2, we have 5,600 mm. And for the Y bar area, we have the summation of 302,000 mm. So in order to locate the Y bar, we have the summation of y times the area over the summation of areas. So, 302,000 divided by 5,600, we have 53.92 or 54 millimeter. Now that we have all what we need, we'll put in into the equation, which is i is equal to 1 over 12 base times height cube with the support of ix is equal to the equation i plus ad squared. We got our final equation, which is the summation of 1 over 12 base times height cube plus AD squared. So 1 over 12 times 90 mm times 40 mm cube plus 90 mm times 40 mm times 16 squared which came from subtracting the 70 mm distance from the centroid minus 54 so now we're gonna add the second rectangle which is 40 mm times 50 mm base times height cube plus 40 mm times 50 mm times 29 which came from subtracting 54 minus 25 millimeters squared so the total we have 480,000 plus 121,600 plus 416,666.6 infinite 6 plus 168,200 so the ix is equals to got three million five hundred thousand two hundred sixty six point seven millimeters. So find the product of inertia for the given shape with respect to x and y axis. So this is a shortcut method that we will solve. The dimensions are in meters. It is understood that we will cut it into two shapes, the rectangle and the triangle. So the product of inertia of x and y, we have the product of inertia of the rectangle plus the product of inertia of the right triangle. This is the area of the shapes. For the area of the rectangle, we have the total of 18.8824.09 meter squared. And for the area of the right triangle, we have the area, total area of 4.7957045 meter squared. And for the centroid of the area of the rectangle, we have the total of x bar is equals to 3.0485 and the y bar is equals to 1.5485. And for the centroid of right triangle, we have the x bar of 7.1293 infinite and the y bar of 1.032333 infinite and the product of inertia of the rectangle is understood to be zero and the 
product of the triangle is equivalent to negative base squared times height squared over 72. Now that we have known the product of inertia of the two shapes, we are enabled to find the total product inertia of x and y is equals to One hundred twenty-three point fifteen meters. That's the product of inertia to the x and y axis. The pendulum consists of a one hundred seventeen kg slender rod and a one hundred twenty-seven kg disc. Determine the mass moment of inertia of the pendulum about an axis perpendicular to the page and passing through the point D. So we have the formula for the rod. Well, the slender rod is one over twelve mL squared which is equals to 1 over 12 and 117 kg slender rod times 0 0.97 which is the length squared is equals to 9.7377 or 7 5 kg meter squared and the disc is equals to 1 over 2 mr squared is equals to 1 over 2 times 127 kg which is the mass of the this and 0 0.3 the radius of the disk squared so we have the total of 5.715 kg meter squared now we're going to divide 0 0.97 to 2 which is equals to 0 0.3 4485 and adding 0 0.97 plus 0 0.3 meters is equals to 1.27 we will find the mass moment d is equals to the i plus d squared times m So, 9.173775 plus 0 0.485 squared times 117 is equals to 36.6951 and 5.7 plus 127 squared times 127 kg so the total is 210.5533 so this is the summation of the two we got 210.5533 plus 36.6951 we have a total of 247.2484 kg meter squared or we can say that it is 147.25 kg meter squared so that is the total mass moment of inertia
So, the mass moment of inertia is equals to 247.2484 kg meter squared. This is the mass moment of inertia.